In this video, we are going to install Qt and Qt Creator on our Windows machine. The first thing I want to do is to go to my browser and go to the Qt site. So it is Qt.io. I am going to click download and try in the top right corner here. And if you look at what we have here, we have a section for download for open source. This is what I want you to click on. And we can scroll down on this next page until we find a button saying download the Qt online installer. I am going to click on this button and I will select to install Qt on my Windows machine. You see we have a bunch of options we can install on Mac, Windows and Linux. We are on Windows so you can either click here or click this button. I am going to click the big button here. And it is going to start downloading the Qt online installer on my system. Once the download is done, I can hop over into my download folder. So I am going to open that and go to my download folder. The first thing I want to do is to open a terminal window here. I am going to open the terminal. Let's right click and open a terminal window here. And why do I want to do this? I want to do this because we may pass command line parameters to this Qt online installer thing. I am going to look at the folder again and look at the name of the file we just downloaded or I can even put it around here. It's not going to hurt. It is called Qt Unified. So I can say Qt Unified and I can say dash dash help. If I do that, you see that we can pass options to this Qt Online Installer application to make it behave differently. Why do I want to do this? Because it is possible to pass a mirror to download files from a location that is closer to you. If you go to your browser and search for Qt open source mirrors, you will get a link like this. So if you click on this, it is going to open up and it is going to give you a bunch of mirrors or servers that you can use to download Qt. For example, I am located close to Kenya. So this is what I am going to use. But if you are in China, Singapore, Germany, Finland or whatever, please click the HTTP server that is closer to you. So I am going to right click and copy link and I will go back to my terminal window and pass a mirror option. Let's go down and make sure that you can see in the documentation. I think we have that down below. So we have a mirror option and we can use to specify the given mirror URL for open source downloads. This is what we want to do here. So I am going to pass the one for Kenya Qt unified and then dash dash mirror and paste in my mirror. And now I have the command in here. If I hit enter, I am going to start the Qt online installer, but I am instructing it to download the open source components from servers that are located somewhere in Kenya. They are close to me, so the download is probably going to go faster and uh, it's going to be more stable, at least I hope. Let's hit enter. This is going to start the online installer. You will need to put in the information for your Qt account. I put in my email here and my password, then I am going to hit next. It is going to give me this page and I will click on these checkboxes and hit next again. And I hit next again. This is going to be downloading some information. At this page, I don't want to send information to the Qt company. If you want, you can do that, but uh, I am going to disable this. I am going to hit next. And down here, you will choose the location where you want Qt installed. The defaults are fine by me, so I am going to put my Qt installation on the C drive of my computer and I will be doing a custom installation here. Don't choose either of these because they won't give you much flexibility. I am going to do custom installation here. And uh, if you want, you can associate common files with Qt Creator as shown here. Hit next and you will be given a window to select components. What I want to do here, I want to uncheck preview and leave latest supported releases checked and then I am going to hit the filter button. When I do that, I will only be presented with stable stuff that I can use. So I want to install Qt 6.6.2 because it is the latest release at the time when I am recording this video. But I want to download the MinGW version. If you want, you can download the MSVC files but this will require to install the MSVC compiler separately and MinGW works just fine. So that's what I am going to use here. But if you are up to it, you can use the MSVC compiler. It is going to work equally well. 
So select Minji W11 here and uh, click next. I am going to check this button and accept the license agreement here. Hit next again. It is going to give me this window. I am going to hit next and all the information is available. Now I can click install and it is going to start installing Qt on my system here. Now it is just a waiting game. I am going to wait for the install to finish and uh, something went wrong. Let's try again. This is going to take some time, so you have to be patient. It is going to be faster or slow depending on the speed of your computer and the speed of your internet connection. Okay, the installation is done. You see, they give me the option to launch Qt Creator or open Design Studio. I'm not going to do either of these. I am just going to finish the installation and I am going to start Qt Creator from my start menu. So if I do Qt, now you see that I have Qt Creator available as an option. I can start it. If you start it, it is going to look something like this. And we can try to create a QML project and see how it looks. Go to File, New Project, and choose Application Qt on the left here. So this is what you want to choose. And down here, we will choose Qt Quick Application. So let's do that, Qt Quick Application and choose. We will give it a name and this is going to be Qt install test. This is what I am going to name it. I am going to put it somewhere on my drive. Let's put it in my sandbox folder. This is going to do. And I am going to hit next. Leave the default here. Choose the kit you want to use. We want to use the kit we just installed. So Qt 6.6.2 Minji W 64 bit. This is what we choose. And here we just leave the defaults. What I want you to notice here is the files that are going to be making up your Qt QML project. We have a CMake list.txt file. We have a main.cpp file and we have a main.qml file. The CMake list.txt file is going to be what brings our project together. So you may think that our project is going to be made up of dozens or thousands or hundreds of files. And it is the job of this CMake list.txt file to wrap all them together and make them part of a single project. So that's what the CMake list.txt file here does. Main QML is going to be containing your QML code, but main CPP is going to be containing the C++ entry point of our application. So even if we are writing our code using QML, behind the scenes, we will be really running C++ code. That's just the reality of things here. Let's click finish. This is going to create our project and you see we have a hello world application. We can try to compile it. Let's wait for it to be configured properly. If we hit the build button and look at compile output here, we will see that the build is good. We can see a good message here that the process exited normally. So this is uh, an indication that the build was good. We can hit the green button down below here and we will have a simple window. And this proves that we have Qt installed and ready to use on our Windows machine here. This is really all I had to share in this video, setting up Qt and Qt Creator on our Windows machine. Now that we have a good installation of this, we are going to head over in the next video and analyze all these files that make up our Qt Creator QML project. I am going to stop here right now and I will see you in the next one.